Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. We'll give everybody a chance to come on in. Please let me know where you are in the world currently. So far, we have Eason from Guyana. Hey, Jonathan. Jonathan from London. Cool deal. Malik from Mississippi. Hey, Dave from Canada. Josh from Vegas. Uh, Red Pill from Vermont. Wow. Thabang from South Africa. Hello. Hey, Stretches from Canada as well. Leon, what's going on from Germantown? Austin from Orange County. Keith Wilson from Atlanta. Keith, I feel like I might know you. Eric Watson from Louisiana. Cool deal. Mark John from Jamaica. Oh, wow. Joseph Blake from Australia. So what is that? What are we at? Six countries so far? Uh, Tola from United Kingdom. Cool deal. Chad from Durham. Hey, Julian, four years from Canada as well. A lot of people from Canada today. All right, McQueen, Jared from North Carolina. Um, so these four levels are not particularly part of a chorus. I think, it, I guess you might say they're part of everything. Hey, veteran. Hey, is that Josh? All right, Tefo from Lesotho. Where is Lesotho in the world? I think we're up to six countries so far. Um, oh, is that South Africa? Is Lesotho South Africa? Hey, Derek. I think we're up to eight countries, or maybe nine. <coughs> All right, come on in. Benji from the Philippines. Welcome. Wow. So I think we're up to 10, 11 countries now. Um, Prolific says, you sound like Marcus Roberts. <laughs> Marcus Roberts is one of my musical heroes. He changed the game for me rhythmically. Um, and just his whole approach uh, on piano. Um, I'm a big fan of Marcus Roberts. Um, his, uh, his album, Time and Circumstance. And there's a song on there called Reflecting Mirrors. I think one of the greatest jazz songs ever created. 
Uh, so Marcus Roberts is, I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll give everybody about 90 more or maybe 60 more seconds to come on in the room and then we'll get started. Uh, as I always say, my goal is not to keep you here all night. <laughs> and I invariably fail every week, but I'm going to definitely try to do it today. <laughs> uh. All right, and so while we're waiting, um, I have a question for everybody. Um, uh, uh, about 30 more seconds and then we're gonna start, but I have a question for everybody. Can you please type in the chat how much you practice? How much do you practice? How much do you practice a day? Or do you not practice? Do you practice every other day? Do you practice five minutes a day? How much do you practice? So I see some people said four hours a week. And Josh says two to three hours a day. All right, Josh, I I know you are getting it pretty well. Um, let's see. Jared says one to three hours. Wow. Um, uh, I'm assuming that's per day. That's phenomenal. Let's see. Um, who else? Dave says at least 30 minutes a day. Stretch says one hour a week. Manor says he uh, became lazy, so don't doesn't practice. Ah, uh, thanks, Derek. Okay. All right. So let's get started um, um, with the four levels of mastery. Um, the four levels of mastery. Now, um, I did not create these four levels of mastery. I was actually introduced to these fa fairly recently. Um, I, I'm part of a, a mastermind group. Um, uh, um, I'm, I'm learning about uh, how to do business. Um, I'm trying to become a businessman, y'all. And so in this, in this, uh, um, in this training I'm going through, uh, one of the things we learned was about these four levels of mastery. And so um, I said, man, I want to share these with you all uh, because I think uh, this idea uh, is not just for business, um, but it's for anything in life, um, how to master the four levels of mastery. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about it. Um, um, but let me go through each one. Um, the first level, and uh, to it, I have a, a chart here that I'm going to share on the screen so we all can look together. Um, and so we're going to start in that um, upper left hand, well, I'm not sure how it looks on your screen, but the green area where it says unconscious incompetence. Now, this theory um, of mastery is from, um, there are a couple of sources, but I think the most uh, reputable one was, it was originated by someone named Noel Burke. Um, now, if, I, if that's not correct, please forgive me. Um, there, when, I, when I researched this, there are a couple of sources, um, not no one giving full ownership to one particular person. Um, but unconscious incompetence. All right, so there are four levels of mastery. The first level, is unconscious incompetence. Now I know this sounds bad, but just, just bear with me for a moment and then we're gonna apply it to music. All right, unconscious incompetence. This is when you're first starting out as something. Um, you're incompetent, meaning you don't know how to do it. And your unconscious incompetence, the unconscious part of the word um, is that you don't know what all you need to know. 
So not only can you not do it, but you don't, know if you don't even know what you need to do to be able to do it. You're not sure of all the, the training needed. Um, so we just don't know. Um, for example, I've, um, I've never been a pilot. Um, and so I don't have any skills in the piloting world, how to fly airplane, right? But I don't even know what skills I need to be able to fly airplane. I, I know I need to read the instruments, but I don't, I don't know the, the all the little skills needed to be able to read the instruments, what instruments to read, how to, I just don't know. So not only an, am I incompetent, but I'm unconscious, or I don't know the areas that I need to know, all right? And so this is where most beginners start. This is why the arrow there is, um, that says most of us start here. All right, and then we move down into the pink area. This is the conscious incompetence. All right, conscious meaning I'm starting to know the areas that I need to learn, right? I'm, I'm starting to be aware of the skills that are needed. But the incompetence part means, but I still can't do it. <laughs> I'm not proficient in it yet. Okay. So we move from not knowing uh, even what I need to do to now knowing what I need to do, um, but I still can't. I still can't do it. All right. And then we move to the yellow part. This is the conscious competence. Uh, now this is I know what needs to be played. And I'm competent. I can play it. I have to focus. I have to be focused and I have to exert effort to be able to play this, these, wh or whatever it is I'm doing. I have to fo focus and really spend some mental energy to be able to execute what I need to execute. And then the light blue area at the top um, is unconscious competence. That is that is, um, I don't think about it anymore. I just know how to do it and I, I don't think about it. I, I, it's not a thought. I, I, it just happens. It becomes um, artistry. I, I just, I know I need to play something that sounds this way and it just comes out. Okay. So those are the four levels of mastery and I, th I believe it was originally originated um, by Noel Burke, right? These are the four levels. So we go from not knowing what we need to do and not being able to do it, to knowing what we need to do <coughs> and still not being able to do it, to knowing what needs to be done and being able to do it. And then we don't even think about it anymore and we just do it. We don't, we don't give any thought to it anymore. It just happens. Um, so essentially, it becomes second nature. You don't make any more effort. Um, it just, it just happens. All right. So my my first question for everybody is: Where do you fall on this chart of mastery? Where do, where do, where do you fall? Are you in the unconscious incompetence? Are you in the conscious inco uh, incompetence? Conscious competence or unconscious competence? Which which area do you fall in? All right, so Dave says, it's like when I don't know the song, but have the music and have to concentrate on the sheet music, copying on the piano, for example. Sure. Only says, seems like to be able to reach level four, you need great technique, ear training, and music theory. Am I missing something? Yes and no. Y yes, yes, it's true, but we'll talk more about it. Um, Dave says, I know it just takes effort for sure. Dave says yellow for him. Uh, only says I'm definitely consciously incompetent. <laughs> okay, pink. Ben says all four at once. That's a great comment, actually, Ben. Um, Joseph says yellow moving into blue more and more. Joseph, that's actually a great comment. We have some two great, like, actually everybody's been a great comment, but these two are, are really, really 
really interesting. And I'm going to talk about there. Herbert says, in between pink and yellow. Okay, nice. Leon says, pink and yellow for me. Okay. Okay, great, great, great. Now, here's the reason um, why I, I, I singled out a couple of comments. Um, uh, let's say this is the, I, I'm going to use different terms. So I'm going to say novice. I use terms that we're used to using. Um, intermediate, I'm just going to write int, period. Advanced. And then I'm going to say expert. And so one of the questions I see often from my students is, Corey, how can I go from one level to the next. Tell me everything I need to know um, for for this first particular level so I can get to the next level. Um, what all do I need to know? And this is an interesting... Okay, let me get my marker right. Okay. All right, this is an interesting question um, because truthfully, um, these are not circles with defined borders. You see these borders between the circles? I don't know, that was a bad circle drawn, but it doesn't actually look like that. If I w was to draw an accurate picture, it would look a little weird. So it looks something like this. Well, let me say this is going to be expert. I write EXP for expert, advanced, intermediate. And I, I don't really know. Like when people ask me, Corey, when did you move from one from beginner to intermediate? I don't really remember. Um, I just know I got better. Um, Um, and so there aren't any defined borders between these. Uh, so I know some people say, Corey, give me a list of everything I need to know, and then let me, and let me master all those things, and then I'll be intermediate now. That's not necessarily how it works. For instance, I've met phenomenal classical pianists who could play some of the most difficult concertos, but could not play their major scales. Only knew one, C major but could play classical concertos unbelievable, like just you name it, they could play it, but only knew the C major scale, could not play any of the other ones, right? Um, and so necessarily knowing um, a specific set of information does not, um, it, it's, it's an okay barometer, but it's not the end all be all tell all barometer. And so um, I think that's that fascination is kind of like missing the point. Um, and I think this barometer that we we were just looking at is a better barometer of of what actually happens. Um, okay, let me ask a different question. How many gospel musicians do we have in the room? Like, let, let me know if you're a gospel musician or a jazz musician. Um, just, just let me know where, which, which style of music, or if you're classical, R&B, pop, let, let me know your preferred style of music. Okay, wow. So I see uh, several. I see jazz, gospel, jazz, jazz, gospel, gospel, jazz and blues, gospel, classically trained, gospel. Hey, George. Um, 
classical gospel, jazz gospel, pipe organ. Nice, jazz fusion, jazz. Cool, cool, trying to go for jazz. Okay, cool. All right. All right, so let's take jazz, for example. Um, there are many, many aspects of jazz that, that, that you want to um, master. And, and so I'm going to write mastery on top because this is, should be our focus, mastery. Okay, so let's say, I'm, I'm just name a, a few topics. Comping, this is a topic. Uh, comping, for those that don't know, just simply means accompaniment. So when somebody's soloing and you're like... <laughs> you know, just doing that stuff behind them. And they're soloing... Okay, um, let's see. Improvisation. Um, let's say b the blues, playing over the blues. Um, bebop. Um, pentatonic. I'm just naming modal improvisation um swing uh and th there are a list of voicings yeah there's a list of a whole bunch of topics but i'm gonna stop here okay here's what generally happens excuse it <coughs> <coughs> Wow. All right. So here's what generally happens. Um, I have students, jazz students say, Corey, how can I go from being a beginner to becoming an advanced? And the answer is um, mastery and focus on one idea. So let's say I want to focus on pentatonics. Then I focus there and master there. So here's what happens. My pentatonic ability moves from the green unconscious incompetence and it starts moving up um, to the blue. It starts, we start getting to the blue. But guess what wh about some of these other areas that I mentioned? Um, bebop, my, well, my bebop skills aren't, are still maybe in the green. I'm still a beginner there, right? Um, and so, um, with every musician, there are certain things that are higher than others. And those are the things that those musicians are mostly known for. Um, some, some musicians do some things better than others, right? Um, so, what I would say, if, if you wanted, I, I, know, I know everybody wants a barometer for what is advanced. I would say that for the advanced musician, you know, most of their skills are in the yellow region, and then they have a number in the blue region. But it's not all one category. This is why I highlighted a couple of comments that some people said I'll, I'm between two categories, because that's more accurate. That's more accurate. That you're between, you have some things that you do well, and then some things that you don't do well, right? Um, so you might be... Uh, let me pull up our chart again. So you might be uh, conscious competence w competent when it comes to um, comping, right? Uh, but then when it comes becomes a time it's time for a solo, you might be green. You might not have uh, any idea what to do, right? Okay. Um, let me read some of the comments and answer any questions I see there. All right. I'm trying to master some of Dave says I'm trying to master my two five ones. Um, Dave says practice my friend. You're absolutely right. But practice what? That's the question. Um, only says I feel like I'm always playing the same things over and over. Um, well you got to listen to different things. Um, that would be a great topic. How to improve your comping. Um, only the last video I put out is a comping video. It's left-hand comping. Check it out. It's pretty cool. 
I'm hi, Vicky. How are you? All right. Okay. So does everybody understand the four levels, the four levels of mastery and how all your skills don't get get to the this this highest the blue category, the unconscious competence where I can play this stuff and I don't even think about it anymore. It just happens, right? Um, so basically what I'm saying is um, learning is a journey, not a destination. Now there are a couple skills uh, or a couple of things you must be willing to do to move from one level to the next. All right, let me go back to this chart. All right, actually, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not giving you whiplash. Let me just write here for a second. Um, first thing, build awareness. These are connected. Build awareness and then seek feedback. All right, so build build awareness and seek feedback. All right, when you first start off, you have no idea what you need to know. And so the first thing you want to do is be self-aware. <laughs> it's, like it's like the worst thing you can encounter someone who's not self-aware, who everybody in the room knows, you know, that this person, I don't know, maybe their their breath might smell, but but they don't know and they're not aware. All right, that's a terrible example, but <laughs> you get my point. Um, that you, you, must, you must build awareness that, um, uh, that I don't know everything. Um, and so be willing to uh, grow your awareness. Um, I saw a study um, that talked about um, uh, having of inflated sense of your abilities. And I don't know, every musician that I've ever encountered who had an inflated sense of how good they were, were never as good as they thought they were. Okay? So build awareness. All right? All right. All right, second thing, seek feedback. What is feedback? There are different kinds of feedback. All right? Um, the first feedback you can seek is, I, I tell everybody, when you're practicing, put, put, take your phone, put it right beside your record, and then immediately listen back. Um, and, and that's like getting feedback. That's like, um, you hear about athletes, uh, um, athletes, how they watch the game tape, right? They go back and watch the game tape. It, and we think about that, that, oh, that's what athletes are supposed to do. But what about us as musicians? We kind of listen to the game tape. Go back and listen to yourself playing and write down your thoughts, right? Um, and what do you notice about yourself? And I promise you, what you hear when you're listening back to yourself play is not what you heard or were hearing when you were playing, right? So that's one type of feedback, you listening to yourself. But then this another type of feedback it's having somebody outside of yourself, a teacher, a friend, um, a, uh, somebody who's uh, uh, a confidant, somebody who, can, who, who challenges you, listening to you play and giving you accurate feedback. These things are invaluable. All right. So you must be able to build awareness um, and then seek feedback. You know, don't hide from it. Seek feedback. I have so many musicians that um, I listen to them play, and I see the the issue, and it's not it's not a big issue; it's a small issue. Um, but they are unwilling to hear anybody tell them anything, so I uh, so I, I just sit there and, and don't say anything, um, because I know they're not at a place to to hear feedback. But you cannot improve without feedback. Okay, all right. So let's see if there are any questions. Vicky says, "Can I ask you a question?" Yes, you can, Vicky. Um, Thobbing says, how do we maintain a balance when there's a wealth of information we need to grasp to be well-rounded? Oh, that's a great question. All right, so there's a wealth of information. So I'm going to answer this in a two-panel answer. Number one, 
a master one thing, focus on one idea, master that one idea, and then move to the next topic. S but secondly, and this is a bigger topic, there is so much information out on the internet, YouTube, um, and, um, and it's all, a lot of it, most of it's all great. It's not bad information, it's all great. But you have so, so much information that you can have information overload. And so I'm a big proponent of getting with one person and just studying and learning. All right. Uh, Charles Smith says to Dunning Kruger. Yeah, Charles, I didn't want to go into that because uh, <laughs> there's some parts that said I didn't want to insult anybody. So I tried to gloss over it. But thank you for pointing it out. <laughs> All right. Um, Joshua, I personally think that I will never get there, but I find myself getting better. Um, Josh, uh, let, me l let me just tell you, um, like you never arrive. And the moment you think you've arrived um, is the death knell of your musical career. Um, so uh, our job is to stay hungry, stay motivated, and continually improving, continually getting better. All right. Um, now, you got to change your confession, y wh what you're saying, um, that I'll never get there. Well, you're, let's, let's not focus on the end goal. Let's focus on I want to improve every day. I want to improve every day. Um, Corey, do you have the same thought about those who don't think they're very good but are actually quite good? You know, Dave, um, the truth is the better you get, the more you realize you don't know. The, the, as, as you become more, con like, you know, as we talked about be you being unconscious, you didn't know. And then as you move to conscious, knowing more and more, you realize, wait a minute, there is so much music I do not know or even understand. Like understanding for me, for instance, understanding Indian rhythms, their rhythmic framework, or the flamenco, understanding the, the f flamenco framework rhythmically is something completely different. Um, or even some other uh, uh, um, uh, music, understanding the rhythmic framework is so different. And so I feel like I've mastered 4-4 four four maybe, but what about some other things, you know? So, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Brian, I'm using OBS. <sighs> Alan says, do we always need to do everything in 12 keys? Do we always need to do everything in 12 keys? Um, I would definitely start off uh, trying to learn everything in, in multiple keys. The truth is, I don't, but to be honest, the truth is, I don't learn everything in every key. Um, I learn, m yeah, I don't learn everything in every key. And so in every key, I sound slightly different. Um, but there are, are guys like Oscar Peterson learned everything in every key. And so it didn't matter what key he was in, he would sound exactly the same. Um, and so, uh, but as far as, but, but that, that, that's kind of a pro level thing, but coming up, you need to learn everything. So if y y you need to learn all your chords in every key, you definitely want to do that. All right. All right. So it's Vicky says, what are the difference between jazz and classical phrasing? Like there are a lot of characters authorizations and imagination involved in classical music. Is jazz the same like bebop? <laughs> Vicky, that's a big question. Um, and the original classical composers, most of them were improvisers. They were, they were amazing. A lot of the foundation for jazz improvisation today definitely came from those classical composers. Bach is unbelievable. Um, start as far as studying, um, I, I think he would be the the flashpoint for for jazz. We would look back to Bach and say how he approached. Um, now the phrasing is a little a little different, um, um, uh, just slightly different. We d we do a little bit more triplets, um, a, a little bit a little bit a little bit more rhythm, but the underlying underpinning.
All right, let's see. All right. All right, sorry about that, everybody. I think I froze for a moment, but I'm back. All right, so Joseph asks, while teaching my piano students, should I demonstrate only from the blue level or is it okay to just play whatever? Tell me more about that, Joshua. I, before I answer, I want to make sure I understand um, completely uh, what you're saying. Dave says, oh no, Pang near says Beethoven was the king of improvisation. Beethoven was cool. Mozart was phenomenal. Okay. So. All right, so I said build awareness, seek feedback. All right, here, here is the big one. Here's the big one. Prioritize learning needs. Here is the big one, y'all. Prioritize learning needs. prioritize learning needs um, so let me ask you a question all right in your particular field of study what are the areas that you need to know what are the what are the areas that you must master have you mastered them have you prioritized the areas that need mastering or have are you um, just uh, okay with where you are? I remember about wow, it's been about fifteen years ago. I heard a musician make a statement, and I don't know. It shook me to my core. It it it, bo it bothered me <laughs> so much. We were, it was after a church service and we were standing outside and, uh, and, um, the musician was, was okay. He was, he was okay. Um, but he had the potential to be a lot better. Um, and he said this, he said, look how good I am. And I don't even practice. Just imagine if I practice. And I was like, what why don't you practice that's that's not something to be proud of you you you, you got to put the time and you got to prioritize with the things that that you don't do well and practice those um and so even, to this day i still hear remember that conversation it still rings in my head um as a reminder for me to always be practicing <laughs> okay all right, so you, you need to prioritize your learning needs. All right. All right, so I have, I have a good question here. Do you think that there is a hours or time associated with moving from one quadrant to the next, like the 10,000 hour principle? Or should you work at it for a different approach? All right. Um, well, uh, the 10,000 hour uh, idea um, by Malcolm Gladwell, that's who did it, uh, is, is uh, a general rule that, I, that probably holds true. Um, but I don't think your focus should be on getting 10,000 hours. I just think your focus should be on mastering the idea at hand. And, and like, for instance, um, LeBron James. LeBron James is uh, one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. He'll go down at the end of the day as one of the top um, basketball players in scoring, assisting, rebounding. Right? 
And so I think he's he's approaching a milestone as far as scoring. I don't know. I don't know what the milestone is. Forgive me for I'm just gonna quote a number. Maybe twenty four thousand points. Now on day one in the NBA, LeBron wasn't saying I'm going to score twenty four thousand points. On his first at his first game, he was just saying I need to score the next bucket, the next basket, the next points. Um, so I would say keep your focus on the. Um, on the task at hand and over time you'll get there all right uh let's see a great question um core core uh, dave says core i know you spent a lot of time on scales as you previously stated and demonstrated is that the most important thing to practice other than two five ones and comping <sighs> Well, Dave, the first question I, I'd ask is, what are you trying to accomplish? What is your goal as a musician? Liam says, if I visit U the U.S., is there any chance to learn gospel music? Sure. Uh, sure. Go, to, go, to, go to a church and just <laughs> listen, and you'll be exposed to it. Uh, Urban says the 10,000-hour rule is not realistic. Uh, Urban, I don't know if it's realistic or not. I was thinking back, uh, trying to account how many hours I've practiced on uh, on something. And, uh, I don't know. If I, I don't even know if I've reached the 10,000 hour rule. Maybe I have. I'm not sure. Um, I think the better the better I idea as far as focus should be. You know, the more time I put in right now, the better. Like the more progress I'll make. So focus right now. Um, scales are good, but don't waste all your time with them. That's like spending all your time learning to spell the alphabet as fast as possible. Spend your time on something better. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Uh, you don't have to answer in the chat. If you can, if you want to, but I'm going to ask maybe three or four questions. And just, um, these are food for thought. And then I, and then I have, uh, a resource for you to give and then we'll call it a day. So here's my first question. Are you genuine, genuinely open to taking an objective look at yourself to learn your strengths and weaknesses? Are you open to taking a honest look at yourself and learning your strengths and weaknesses? I know, I know um, quite a few musicians will not listen to anything they've played on because they don't want to hear uh, how they sound. They're not willing to look at themselves. But are you willing to t take an honest look, an objective look, have somebody else give you feedback on how you sound? Are, 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 you, are you willing? All right. The next question. Remember we talked about awareness, building awareness. What sources of information do you have access to that, um, that can help you build awareness? So this is one that I'd like for you to answer in the chat. This is a difficult question, but what sources of information do you have access to um, that'll help you build awareness? What source of information? All right. What source of what source of information do you have access to that can help you build awareness? Actually, this is an easier answer than you think. What sources of information? And while you're thinking about that, when I'll, I'll answer a question, Joseph says, "With my piano students, what is the most useful? Having me playing from you are able to use the skill, but only with effort, or with no thought, no effort, it just comes out." Um, well, Joseph, with your piano students, I, I th uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question, but I, I would be focused on having them play. Um, and then analyzing that and giving them tips on how to improve. Now, if you're talking about when you're demonstrating, um, uh, you, you, you want to just focus on demonstrating this particular idea. You don't want to overwhelm them with too many ideas at once. Uh, all right, so 
Um, Dave says, I guess I just mean scales are more useful for improv improvising, and that is something I want to work on. Yeah, so uh, um, I, I, I generally suggest breaking your uh, practice session into two things. Um, technique work and then actual the practice work. So just like an athlete does things like they have a session where they stretch. It's a whole stretching thing. And then, um, then the actual game or workout. I remember um, there's an exercise uh, uh, DVD series called uh, P90X. And I remember I did it for like nine months straight. Um, it doesn't look like it now. I've kind of fallen off the wagon. But the point is I did do it <laughs> religiously without missing a day. And um, I remember the, when first starting out, like the first seven to ten minutes of the workout was the warm-up, getting your body warmed up, ready to go. And like most people, the first first time you're doing it, the warm-up was too much. It was like, I'm done. <laughs> And then the workout started. <laughs> so um, same thing with your practice time. I suggest you have a time where you work on technique work. So your scales, arpeggios, these type of things. And then, um, so for me, it takes me about 45 minutes to work through these things. Um, um, if I'm being particularly brutal with myself, then it might take an hour and 15 minutes. And then I have a second time where I'm working on ideas, the things I need to prove on transcribing, all these different ideas, okay? Um, yeah, Noriko is taking t Dev taking my class. She is a phenomenal musician. I'm happy to be working with her. Um, Leon says, does recording yourself count as feedback? Yes, that definitely counts as one level of feedback. Another level is hearing from somebody um, else. Urban says, you, Alan, and Cornell Gaskin. Um, I'm a big fan of Alan Merville and Quinnell Gaskins. They are both phenomenal players. Uh, they are um, and very knowledgeable. Um, okay. All right, let's keep moving because I have some, some resources to give you. All right. So here we go. I do want you to write this in the chat. So write this in the chat. Think of one skill or uh, well in this case, skill that you're trying to improve. What stage in the model are you in? And let me put the model back on the screen so everyone can see it. What stage are you in? Are you in the unconscious incompetence, meaning I don't know how to do it, and I don't even know how to know how to do it. Like, I have no idea. Are you there? Are you in the conscious in incompetence, meaning I know what I need to do, I just can't do it. Or the conscious competence, meaning I know what I need to do and I can do it. Or the unconscious competence, meaning I don't even think about it anymore. I just do it. It just kind of happens. Uh, what, is, um, what is one area that you're working on? So I definitely want you to write that in the chat. Now, some of you might still be like, Corey, give us an example of something. Okay, eating with a fork. When you were learning to eat with a fork, all right, first off, when you were a baby, you had no idea about how to eat with a fork. And then uh, as you grew a little older, you had an idea how you were supposed to eat with the fork, but you would try to get it to your face and it might hit you in the eye and the nose and you'd have stuff all over your face. And then you got better and it when you, you thought about it as it was coming to your mouth and you could get it into your mouth or eating with a spoon, same thing. And then now as an adult, you don't even think about eating with a fork. You just do it. It just happens. You don't think anything about it. It just happens. All right. All right. So what is one area? Somebody said... What does exactly does learning with my ears mean? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, but I would imagine saying listening to the music and trying to figure out what they're playing. Ben says <laughs> 15 gospel endings. <laughs> Pink, yellow, range. I didn't necessarily mean something that I put out, Ben, but <laughs> uh, 
and I appreciate that, that. I'm honored that you're learning that. Uh, Josh says reading, reading music. So he's in the green and pink. Okay. Dave says improvising pink. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Ah, oh, Leon says left hand walking bass lines is a challenge for me. I need the right resource to help me get there. Um, Joseph says playing without looking at the keyboard. Pink. Okay. Kabbalah says scales. Okay. Kabbalah says scales. Okay. Ah, oh, Leon says I need the right resource to help me get there. I'm trying to think, Leon, if I have a walking bass line. All right, um, Leon, um, I'll see what else I have, but let me um, let me share this with you. I created a video. Here it is. And I think this the first thing I start with is walking baseline. So check this video out, Leon. All right. Let's see what else. <laughs> Josh says, I'm reading on a fork level. I hear you. <laughs> um, Urban says, yellow is where I am. I just entered that space. Okay. Helen says, better fingerings. Okay. Cool deal. Um... Um, for those looking to have better fingerings, uh, and uh, not to sound like a cheap peddler, but here's a video in the, I just put in the, in the chat that'll help you with fingering. Improvising on key center. Okay, cool. So listen, I, uh, Urban says yellow drop two. Okay, cool deal. Drop two is a great technique. I, I would, I would venture to say that about, 80% of my playing is all drop two. <laughs> uh, I use it everywhere. Maybe, maybe, maybe less. Maybe like 78. <laughs> um, Sebastian says, being able to play what I hear, knowing all the intervals. Okay. George says, reharmonization. All right. So here's what I want to do, you all. I want to give you some resources to help you. Uh, here's what I've done. Um, a little while ago, I, I did a be, Become the Musician of, the, of Your Dreams or Be the Musician of Your Dreams. Um, and so what I've done is I've put together a PDF bundle with uh, like a jazz checklist of all the jazz skills. Like you need, all, not all, but it's a pretty exhaustive list. It's like two or three pages, I think. And then I, done, I did the same thing with gospel. And then not only that, I put um, a, a, a practice journal, um, a template showing my own practice journal, what I'm working on, how, how I actually work through my practice session. And so what I'm going to do, it's free, it's, there's no charge. Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to put a link in the description box. And all you do is just click the link and... Um, click the link, put your, e your name and email address in there. And then confirm your email address so um, we know it's a real person. Oftentimes when I put up links like this, I'll get spammed by like 100 robots. And so just to avoid that, make sure you confirm your email address and then we'll, we'll send you the, uh, uh, the resource. So here's that link. Um, so definitely, um, it's free. J just put your name and email address so we can send it to you. Um, and make sure you confirm your email address. And, so, and also make sure uh, um, make sure you check your spam folder, junk folder, and whitelist our, our, our emails so you get, you get your stuff that you wanted. Um, so what I mean by whitelist, tell your email client, whether you're using Apple Mail or Outlook, that emails from, from skilled musician are okay. okay. And we're not going to be spamming you uh, or anything like that. Um, we just want to make sure um, send you some resources and then and then 
uh, possibly in the future let you know about some other resources that you might be interested in so that's the link again put your name email address in there and then uh, confirm your email address so we'll send you an email just say confirm it just make sure you're a human as I said we get tons I get every day tons of spam from ro robots because I have these free resources out and so I just, we just want to kind of eliminate that okay all right so again the four levels of mastery we have unconscious incompetence that is I don't n know what I need to know and I can't do it conscious incompetence I kind of know what I need to do but I still cannot do it conscious competence I know what I need to do and I can do it and then unconscious competence is I don't even think about what I need to do anymore. I just do it. And that's where we need to get. That is the level of mastery uh, that we all need to ascribe to in every part of our playing. That I don't even think about it anymore. A lot of now a lot of times when I'm when I'm playing, I'm not even thinking I'm thinking about bigger topics. So I'm not thinking about the actual chord. I'm thinking about uh, I need to we need to be happy here. Or I need to, I want to create a different kind of sound. And I, I just, my hands just kind of go there. I, I just, it just kind of happens. And so, um, that's not in everything. There's some, there's definitely some areas I need to work on personally. Um, and I even, I think I share that, my strengths and weaknesses, I think I share that in um, the bu PDF bundle uh, um, uh, for you all. So definitely you all um, grab that resource, it's free, it, it doesn't cost anything. I'll put the link in again, so just to make sure you can grab it. Again, put your name and email address, and then make sure uh, you confirm your email because we get so many robots and, and just, like you have no, I mean, no idea how many people just like, like spam and these robots that just kind of constantly hit, hit your email. So it's unbelievable. I want to make sure I'm sending it to the right people. All right. <sighs> so I promised you all I was not going to keep you here all night. <laughs> and we are we are approaching one hour. And so today I am going to hit this hour mark. So I have two and a half minutes. So are there any other questions that I can answer really quickly for you um, before we go ahead and sign off for today? Are there any other questions? Go ahead and write them quickly because I want to get to them. Uh, any other questions? Also, while you're, um, while you're here, definitely hit the like button. Um, that definitely helps me. Uh, and helps help this channel grow. What's your take on talent, Corey? Um, I, I, I agree with Malcolm Gladwell on talent. Um, there's definitely some talents that people have um, that helps, but you know, I know one talent that everybody wants is perfect pitch. Um, or some people are just gifted, can jump higher. Some people, uh, for basketball players, uh, can run faster. Uh, and those are talents that, excuse me, that they definitely have. Um, however, I have never met wa anybody who's who's been uh, a success like that who has not worked, even with the talent. They always work and work extremely hard. Um, they work. Matter of fact, the ones with the talent actually, in my in my just, they, they work harder than the ones without the talent. Um, uh, so so definitely p put the work in. Uh, Keith says this is great. Thanks, Corey. Ah, oh, thanks, Keith. I really appreciate that. Only says people hit the like button. Yes, hit the like button. That that'll help me. That help that helps grow the channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm, and um, I definitely want to be able to keep doing this for you all. Alan says, thanks, Corey. Oh, you're welcome, Alan. Jared says, thanks so much, brother. Until next time. Yes, sir. Vicky says, thanks, Corey. Thank you, Vicky. Crystal says, thank you, Corey. Thank you, Crystal. How do I get the PDF? Here's the link, uh, Crystal. Um, uh, just click that link, put your email address, your name and email address, and then you'll get an email from me saying, is this really you could confirm and hit uh, 
and then you'll get it. Uh, let's see. All right, here's the link to my channel, Enrico. I think that's the right link. Let me just. Yeah, that's the link to my channel. Um, Corey, what would be the best course to start with, skilled musician? Um, but Leon, it depends. And it depends entirely on what you're trying to accomplish. What are you What are you trying to do? So, if you're trying to be a jazz musician, then I would go with the improvisation course. If you're a gospel musician, you want to improve that. Um, um, both the chords galore class will help you there, and the gospel foundations course will help you. Um, if you're trying to improve your chord vocabulary, the chords galore class is unbelievable. I would go there. So, it all depends on what you're trying to do. Haldino Here, Here's the link to um, the resources. Just uh, go there, click there. And it's not just one, it's several PDFs or several pages. Uh, Tony says thanks. Uh, thanks, Tony. All right, I'm right at an hour and one minute. All right, so thank you all again. Um, so until next week, same time, be blessed and happy practicing.